Retinoblastoma is a rare childhood eye cancer. It affects about 300 children per year in the United States and about 5,000 per year worldwide. The tumors actually begin during fetal development in the retina, which is the light-sensing part of the eye. Retinoblastoma patients are among the youngest cancer patients. Treatments include chemotherapy, laser therapy, and radiation therapy. Some cases necessitate surgical removal of the eye. If the tumor is contained within the eye, about 95% of patients can be cured with current therapies. However, the prognosis is much worse for children in developing countries whose cancer is often advanced when it is discovered. For up to half of those patients, retinoblastoma remains a death sentence. At St. Jude and other institutions, we brought together clinical researchers, pharmacologists, medicinal chemists, pathologists, and experts in computational biology to improve the outcomes for children with retinoblastoma. To further speed progress against retinoblastoma and other childhood cancers, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and the Washington University School of Medicine embarked upon the Pediatric Cancer Genome Project. The three-year project aims to complete whole genome sequencing of normal and tumor DNA from 600 children battling some of the most challenging cancers. Collaborations across institutions like St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and Washington University for the Pediatric Cancer Genome Project are becoming increasingly important because technology is getting so complex that you need these large centers to come together and focus on single questions. And this was an ideal partnership to improve our understanding of retinoblastoma. Researchers have known for decades that loss of a tumor suppressor gene named RB1 launches retinoblastoma during fetal development. But the other steps involved in the rapid transformation from a normal cell to a malignant tumor cell that occurs in this cancer were unknown. We were really trying to resolve a 40-year-old paradox in the field. And we all understand as cancer biologists that to, for a cell to become malignant, it must acquire a whole spectrum of new properties. Now, the favorite model was that retinoblastomas have a very high rate of mutation, and that would explain how you could get all those mutations and they could grow so quickly. We checked that by actually looking at the entire genome and characterizing every mutation in these tumors, and it was exactly the opposite. Retinoblastomas actually have some of the lowest rate of mutation of any human cancer analyzed so far. The fact that we have pretty quiet genome uh, is uh, to me, initially, as a disappointment, but Dr. Dyer actually looked at it in a different way because it suggests a different mechanism that being into the play to uh, dysregulate the genome rather than the DNA at the DNA sequence level. So we went back to the drawing board to try to figure out how these tumors progress so quickly. And what we found was instead of genetic mutations, it's a process we called epigenetics. And that's how genes get turned on and off through how the genes are organized into different structures. And we identified over a dozen known cancer genes that are epigenetically changed in retinoblastoma. Most notably, uh, a gene called SYK, which is a, uh, a kinase gene, often found to be mutated or somehow perturbed in, in other types of cancer. And we do see changes in the expression of that gene. Uh, and that's very important. That uh, basically gives the cancer cell additional uh, growth advantages. Uh, and probably is the other key factor in, in how uh, retinoblastomas form. This is a gene that's implicated in leukemias, but isn't even normally expressed in the eye. And it turns out this gene is turned on to very high levels in virtually all retinoblastomas and is required for them to survive. The best part is that there's a drug being developed against this very specific kinase. And this drug is not being developed for retinoblastoma, not even for cancer. It's being developed for rheumatoid arthritis. This rheumatoid arthritis drug is very effective at killing retinoblastoma cells. Work is now underway to reformulate an SYK inhibitor called R406 so it can be delivered directly into the eye. Those efforts are expected to lead to a phase one trial in children with retinoblastoma. The team that we built here at St. Jude focused on retinoblastoma. That approach can be replicated for other childhood cancers, adult cancers, and a wide variety of other diseases. So I think it's a model for translational research going forward.